figure shows a typical retaining wall. It constitutes the wall and the base. The base can be separated into the toe and the heel. Under some circumstances, toe beam or heel beam may be provided. The purpose is to ensure and take advantage of the passive pressure in resisting the active pressure. The forces acting on retaining wall include the active pressure, the weight of the member, the weight of the soil, and also the reactions. They are normally surcharged acting on the higher elevated soil. The soil can be utilized or not utilized in the retaining wall system in ensuring the stability of the structure. This is the active pressure caused by the surcharge and this is the active pressure caused by the soil due to the depth. The higher the depth of the retaining wall, the active pressure due to the soil increases. For this system, the weight of the soil is considered, while for this system, the soil is not really considered. This represents the weight of the wall and the weight of the base. Same goes to the weight of the wall and the weight of the base. There are frictional force in resisting the horizontal force caused by the active pressure and there will be bearing stresses in resisting all the vertical forces acting on the retaining wall systems. Among these forces, there are favorable and unfavorable to the stability of the structures. The favorable forces ensure the stability of the retaining wall, while unfavorable forces encourage the failure of the wall. 